Hi you guys and welcome back to another true crime and makeup time video. If you're new here, my name is Zara and I post a new true crime video every single week. So if you love makeup and you love true crime, definitely think about subscribing and leave me a comment down below letting me know if you have any really cool case suggestions. I would love to check it out. So today's case is one that I find just really bizarre and it's really sad in terms of a long-term relationship, a super long-term relationship just falling apart and turning really ugly. This case definitely has some weird elements to it and some spells. So let's get into the case of Maya Milete and talk about what happened. So Maya May Milete, she was born, um, her last name was Tabalanza, and she was born on May 1st, 1981 in the southern province of Ilocos Sur in the Philippines to her parents, Pablito and Noemi Tabalanza. And she has five other siblings. So she is one, well, she's the fifth of six children. In 1995, Maya's whole family, they immigrated to the US and they settled in Honolulu, Hawaii. She attended Radford High School and later graduated from the University of California with a major, I guess, in the subject of international studies. In 1998, Maya began a relationship with a man named Larry Malette, and apparently they were high school sweethearts. And as soon as they turned 18 in the year 2000, they got married and then they moved to Chula Vista in San Diego, California. Larry Malete was born on 24th September 1981 and he previously lived in Hawaii also and when they got married he enlisted in the US Navy similar to his father. His father did the same thing but his Navy reserve obligation was actually terminated in the year 2008. He seemed to have a fairly normal upbringing but when he was 16 he actually was accused of stabbing a boy that was 17. Now, his 17-year-old victim, he recovered in hospital, but then Larry was arrested. And this was allegedly supposed to be part of like a gang-related incident, but he also apparently stabbed the boy like multiple times. So when Larry and Maya got married in the year 2000, they seemed to just kind of like for the first 10 years of their life, like they just kind of like lived their life. You know, they got married pretty young. They were 18. So up until the, they were 28, they kind of just like, I don't know like did young things. I don't know. Like instead of having kids, they were kind of just like chilling, pretty happy. So then in 2010, Maya gave birth to her first child, a daughter. Then in 2011, she had her second daughter. And then in 2016, they had their third child, um, which was a boy. Maya was employed as a civilian contract specialist with the Naval Base. And when Larry was discharged from his obligation, he ended up working as an optician at the Naval Medical Center. And Larry and Maya just lived their life with their three children in their home in Chula Vista. Maya was passionate about hiking, dirt biking, traveling, and she also regularly camped with her family. And this was actually one of the reasons why they chose their home in Chula Vista, the one that they bought, because it was right next door to like hiking trails and um, like mountain areas. She also had her own YouTube channel where she would post um, herself singing, you know, covers of songs, playing the guitar, playing the piano. She's pretty talented. And this takes us to 7th January 2021. So literally like a year ago, like a year and a bit ago. At this point, Larry and Maya had been married for nearly 21 years. And remember I said Maya was um, the fifth of six siblings and she was extremely close to her siblings. And on this day, January 7th, 2021, her siblings were trying to get like in touch with her and they were just getting no response from Maya. They actually said Maya was one of those people that you text and you don't get a response from for like several days. But they said this time it was just really different. And by the time it hit Sunday, the 10th of January, they hadn't heard from her since the 7th of January. So they were like, this time it's just different. It's just not the same thing. She would have eventually, you know, replied by now. Also, the Sunday, it was meant to be, well, it was the day of her eldest daughter's birthday party. And Maya and her family planned a 
big event for this day, like a big family event. The family had planned to go to Big Bear Lake to celebrate, and that was like a three hour drive away. And the fact that Maya hadn't rang them to be like, let's plan what we're going to bring, what we're going to do, what time we're going to meet there. Like, it just wasn't like her. And what was also weird is that at that time, when they were trying to get in touch with Maya, they couldn't get in touch with Maya or Larry. Like, nobody was picking up their phone. So on January 8th, 2021, the day after Maya's family was first initially trying to get in touch with her, Larry had allegedly gone to Solana Beach with his youngest son. And he apparently left, like, super early in the morning. His son was four and he left without actually seeing Maya. Like he left without even saying bye to her. He said he heard her like walking around in the bedroom upstairs, but he hadn't actually physically seen her. And this was actually not confirmed with any evidence because Larry, he actually left his phone at home that day. So it couldn't be confirmed with like GPS tracking. So soon after Maya's brother goes to their Chula Vista home to check on Maya because he's like, okay, what's going on? At the house, he meets Larry, who tells him that Maya and him got into a really big fight the previous night, and oh, well, not the previous night, the Wednesday night, and Maya just stormed upstairs and locked herself in the bedroom. He said she had not spoken to the kids or Larry and just went to cool down. So her brother, he goes and he knocks on the door, tries to get a response from Maya, but she doesn't open the door. So he leaves assuming that she just needs to cool down and he doesn't want to bother her. So I think that visit actually took place on the 8th of January, the Thursday or the Friday. And now it's the 9th of January. It's a Saturday. Family still hasn't heard from her. So on that Saturday, her father, Pablito, her sister, Mari Chris, and her husband, Richard, they all go to Maya's house because they're like, okay, Let's figure this out. And they go and speak to Larry. Larry tells them the same thing. And they're both like, this is kind of ridiculous. Like, Larry, just open the door. Like, just open the bedroom door. So I believe her father and Richard actually break open the bedroom door. And they look around inside the bedroom and they're like, no one's here. There were no signs that anyone had actually even left the bedroom or been in the bedroom and then left. And there were no signs that anyone left through the bedroom window. Like, it just looked really really untouched. Larry at this point still insists like, look, I haven't seen her, you know, like that's the last thing that happened between us. And that's the last time that I saw Maya. So the family goes, looks around and they realize that obviously Maya's car is still there, but then they look and they realize her license and her credit card are missing. So at 11, 18 PM that night, my, uh, Maya's sister, Mary Chris calls the Chula Vista police and she's like, okay, I have to report my sister Maya is missing. Now Maya was always on her phone. Like she was one of those people like me always on her phone. And the last time her phone had actually been used had been on that Thursday, the 7th of January. And it had last been used on 7th of January at 8, 15 PM. But then at like 1 25 AM that morning, it was either completely shut off or lost connection. But that did happen while it was still in the Chula Vista area. And her family and Larry were just confused because Maya wouldn't just up and leave. She had three children. She loved her family. She wasn't going to, she wasn't going to do that. So Maya's family goes and speaks with a man named Billy Little. He was from the Cold Case Foundation. His name was Billy Little. And on January 11th, Larry lets Billy walk through the family home. As Billy was doing this, he notices a hole in the bedroom wall, like their master bedroom wall. And he also noticed that a freezer from their garage was missing. Later, Larry found this freezer at one of Larry's relatives' house. And Larry blames the hole in the wall on Maya and says that, you know, she did that. The windows were all open. The fan was on full blast. And Billy states that Larry had looked like he had been cleaning. Now, after Maya's family reports her missing, this actually prompted the police department to launch a massive search operation. The last time Maya's sister had physically seen Maya was on 3rd January 2021. And that's when they went on like a family camping trip to Glamis Dunes in California. And according to Mari Chris and her husband, uh, Richard, 
Larry and Maya were just not getting along on that trip. Like they were just constantly fighting. They had allegedly been arguing over a Jeep Wrangler that, you know, Larry had brought with them. You know, when you're around a couple that just keeps fighting, like, you know, like I remember when we were younger, we used to be around this couple, Jay and I used to be around this couple that would like have crazy fights all the time in front of us. Like, like it didn't matter where we were, they were crazy fights. And it's so awkward because you don't know what to do. And like, I feel like if it's a family member, it's a little bit easier because you can be like, guys, shut up. But when it's like a friend, you just have to like, ooh, you know, just like watch. But apparently this camping trip was super awkward because that's what they kept doing. They just kept fighting. But what makes their situation kind of weird is that Maya on that trip allegedly said to one of the family members on the trip, if anything ever happens to me, it was Larry who did it. Like, what a weird thing to say, right? Like, that's your husband and you're going to fool, you're going to fool accuse him of doing something before he even did it, you know? So on January 15th, Larry now says that, okay, growing concerned about my wife because now she's missed our daughter's 11th birthday and she wouldn't do that. Like at this point, it had been a week since she had been missing. And this is the first time you kind of make this statement. But I mean, you can't really judge because we don't know what he was saying to the family behind closed doors. But in the meanwhile, the police, they carry out the searches. People are now searching, you know all over for Maya and at one point they actually did find bones but those bones turned out to be animal bones and on January 23rd now they the police they finally seized the Malete's home and they also seized their black Lexus SUV. In a follow-up investigation they actually ended up seizing a bunch of guns from Larry's possession and also in the possession of of his like family members like aunts and uncles but they were actually Larry's guns and then this case gained national interest because the family then goes and appears on the well not the well the family except for Larry goes on the Dr. Phil show to like plead for Maya's safe return and then a month later police search Maya's home again the Malete residence once again and during this time they found a well, they found video evidence from a neighbor's like camera and the neighbor's camera was recording that night, the street, and they ended up finding this. Now, even with this recording and um, with Maya allegedly saying to her family members, you know, if anything happened to me, it would be Larry. Maya's family still didn't believe that Larry had anything to do with Maya's disappearance. Like, couldn't be, you know, he was, he was her husband. They had been together for like two decades. It wasn't him. It just couldn't have come to this. They had three beautiful children together. Like, no, it's not Larry. Months went by, Maya was still not found, and the missing persons case eventually just turned into a homicide case. Her brother-in-law, Richard, said that the investigation had been super frustrating for the family because he felt like this case should have been classified as a homicide like ages ago. They hadn't found Maya for months, and where was she? Clearly, clearly this was a homicide case. He states that, you know, the perception that she would just get up and disappear and leave her kids like it just wouldn't happen that that wasn't who Maya was and he actually said it's just so obvious what's going on and it's just too bad that the police don't see it that way that was his statement Maya's husband he just insisted that he had nothing to do with the case and that he didn't know what happened to Maya and at that point he just remained a witness and he wasn't a suspect and Mari Chris Maya's sister actually said I'm hoping that Larry you know still has nothing to do with the case and she claimed that her and the family still wanted to believe his story, but it was getting more and more difficult at this point. So at this point in February uh, 2021, Larry now retained a lawyer and he decided that he no longer wanted to cooperate with the police. He also like didn't take part in the search 
for Maya. And isn't this always a sign, guys? Like, always. It's always a sign. If your loved one is missing, I wouldn't be in the house. Like, I mean, he had kids, so yeah, you would be taking care of your kids. But if I didn't have kids or if someone else could take care of the kids for me, like, I would be out there looking for my loved one. I don't care. I would be there, you know? And this is always, like... Guys, if you want to hide your, you know, guilt, go look for the person. Tips on how to commit crimes with Zara. So anyway, now it's March 7th, 2021. Two months exactly since Maya went missing. Her family with her friends and like volunteers in the community. They held a special walk and a prayer for Maya in Chula Vista. And they were still holding out hope for Maya. They were like, we're going to find her and... They just didn't want the case to turn cold. They didn't want anyone to forget about Maya. So obviously we're all thinking the same thing. Let's talk about the relationship between Maya and Larry. And the reason why we think this is because the husbands, they start acting weird or they don't take part in the searches. I mean, Scott Peterson, Chris Watts, we all know, you know. So obviously the investigators are thinking about it too. So they go deep into the relationship of Maya and Larry. And when Mari Chris initially reports Maya missing, she actually tells the police that she was con uh, she was concerned about Larry and Maya because their relationship the past few months was just not not at its best. And she said, you know, they had recently begun fighting to the point where it was a lot. So this could be an important factor in the case. In 2020, Larry actually sends hundreds of text messages to him, well, his and Maya's friends and family accusing Maya of cheating on him, complaining about her that she's having an affair, blah, blah, blah. And despite having like no evidence of this affair, he actually contacts, it's not funny, but he actually contacts Maya's employees and, well, employer, and he asks that Maya be moved or the guy that he believes Maya is having an affair with to be moved to a different departments so that they wouldn't have contact anymore like guys if you're in a relationship and someone wants to do that go behind your back contact people like that is so controlling so controlling like what you do is your business and I'm not saying having an affair is right but if you wanted to have the affair you know no one should be controlling your like every move and I think you know that's that's a pretty big sign of like something ain't right. So then on 28 June, 2020, he sends like this Bible verse to one of his friends or one of the family members. And this is what the verses contain. Well, this is what the text messages and this is what the text message contained, like the verses. So it says the lips of the adulterous woman drip honey and her feet go down to death. Her steps lead straight to the grave. And then on September 16th, 2020, he sends a text message of what appears to be a photo of like a photo of him and Maya. And it's like an altar dedicated to him and Maya, but it's like surrounded with candles and like love is great and all, but that's creepy. Don't have an altar dedicated to me. Like that's weird. At this point, police found no evidence that Maya disappeared on her own accord. Like even if she wanted to, she couldn't financially, like she hadn't been using any money. Like it just, it wasn't something that seemed viable. And through the evidence that they had, they believed that Larry murdered Maya and got rid of her body on the night of January 7th, 2021. Larry and Maya's relationship had been sort of on the decline for a year. They had been getting into a lot more fights and this had been taking place for a long time. He either knew Maya was having an affair or he just believed it. And that's why he sent all those text messages to her family and their family um, in 2020. And it seems like Maya was just done with him. She was just done with him. She was over the fighting, over the drama. And in December 2020, she actually told some family and friends that she was done with Larry. She said the marriage was over and she was seeking help and advice on contacting a lawyer, a divorce attorney. Maya at this point was planning a life without Larry. Larry, on the other hand, according to friends, had become super paranoid about Maya leaving him and he began exhibiting stalker-like behavior, like full stalker mode. He would monitor her all the time. He would check her phone. He would even pop up at her workplace, like unexpected, to see if she was actually going to be where she said she was going to be. 
And at that same camping trip in January 2021, Larry apparently asked one of the friends, did he know anyone that was willing to kill a guy, meaning the guy that he believed Maya was having an affair with, like the co-worker that he believed there was some relationship with? Like, do we even know who this guy was? Was he ever proven to be real? Like, is Larry just delusional? And then on that same trip, Maya had told her friend that Larry had recently choked her until she had passed out. Like, why wouldn't you report that if you're the friend? Like, why wouldn't you at least tell, I mean, if you were her friend or her family, like, tell her sister, tell her family member. Like, I don't know. Like, these kinds of things, like, you need to tell people. Larry also had a best friend and his name was Google because he would always search up weird shit like plant you take to never wake up. My wife doesn't want me to touch her. And there were also like a lot of drug names that he would search up, um, like drugs that would essentially do the same thing, make a person pass out, you know? Now this is where it gets crazy. Larry had a bit of a shopping habit. He would go and buy spells. Yeah, spells. Spells to cast on Maya. Now, when I was looking this up, you can buy spells for anything. Anything. Like, I want to make more money. I, you know, want this man to fall in love with me. I want YouTube to show my videos to more people. You know what I mean? <laughs> Things like that. So from September 2020 to January 2021, Larry would buy spells all the time. Sometimes, well, he would buy spells every single day. Sometimes multiple times a day. Like, he was desperate and all these spells were related to maya and all of them were targeted towards maya like they he wanted these spells to be cast on maya and i'm gonna read you some of them because honestly i feel like they're kind of sick like I, I get it if you're like you know please you know make maya see what we have and you know the relationship that we have or please help us you know better our relationship please let me become the man that maya deserves please show me you know things i can do to be to be a better partner towards maya things like that but these were the spells that he would try and cast on her okay dear whoever whoever the spell person was please punish may and incapacitate her enough so she can't leave the house it's time to take the gloves off can you hex to have her hurt enough that she will have to depend on me and need my help she's only nice to me when she needs me or is sick Thanks again. Maybe an accident or a broken bone. Make her realize we're meant to be with each other. Make her miserable without me. Make her want to sleep on the same bed for all eternity. That is some like twisted shit. He also had a shrine dedicated to Maya that he would actually cut himself and pour his own blood out on. And he would do this on photos of them as a couple. Like, my goodness. It was then revealed that the last time that Larry had seen Maya on the Thursday, 7th of January, she had actually been on her way back. She had been returning home from a visit with a divorce attorney. Then around 9.15 p.m. that same night, that recording that we heard earlier, nine loud bangs were heard. However, these bangs, like these noises, were never confirmed to be from gunshots. It was also reported that the following day, the Friday 8th of January, that Larry, he was seen adjusting the position of his black Lexus SUV at the front of the uh, garage of the family home. And he was doing this around 5.58 a.m. And neighbors were stating that they couldn't actually make out at the time um, if he was loading something into his vehicle, removing something from his vehicle. They couldn't make this out. I mean, Chris Watts, anyone? Like, this is identical. He then leaves home at 6.45 a.m. Um, with his son and stays out of the home for, like, 11 hours. So, like I mentioned before, Larry, you know, says that he was actually with his four-year-old son at Solana Beach for the day for 11 hours. And he suspiciously leaves his phone at home, forgets it. And, you know, that way they couldn't really confirm because he, the phone wasn't there, so they couldn't do the GPS tracking. Then Maya had booked a meeting with a divorce attorney on 12th January 2021, Larry knew. And on the evening of 7th January 2021, Maya returns home from a 
another meeting with a uh, divorce attorney, and then her phone was no longer in use. Um, 1.25 a.m. on the 8th of January. And remember the spells? He would cast one every single day, multiple times a day. The 8th of January was the last time he cast any spells on Maya. On 9th January 2021, he contacts the spell casters again and he asks them to remove a hex placed on Maya. In this, he says, you know, please stop hexing my wife Maya or just remove any hex that's on Maya. And he also didn't go to work on the 6th, 7th or 8th of January. On the night of 7th January 2021, Larry tells police that him and Maya got into a huge fight. Maya storms off. She goes upstairs into the bedroom and she locks herself in there. He says he leaves her alone that night, goes to bed. He doesn't actually state where he went to bed, maybe on the couch, maybe there was a spare bedroom. But he says the next morning he wakes up and he just goes to the beach with his son. Now, unless they had planned this, like, say, for example, you're having a fight with your loved one or your partner and you have a kid and you're fighting and the next morning you just like take the kid 6.45 in the morning and go for 11 hours. That's going to piss your partner off if they didn't know you were going to do that. And I think it's going to piss your partner off either way. If you're going for 11 hours with a four-year-old, like that's like to the beach. I don't know. That doesn't seem right. So because he says this beach story, the police are like, okay, we'll point out on this map which beach you went to. You went to Solana Beach, right? Where is this beach? So he goes to this map and he points at the beach. He's like, I went to this beach. Turns out the beach that he pointed out was a completely different beach in the completely different direction of Solana Beach. So where were you really at? So that evening, Maya's family, they come over, they look for Maya, they go through the bedroom door, couldn't find Maya, report her missing. Police also search through Larry's phone, as they would, and he gives them the phone, like, willingly. He's like, here you go, search through my phone. And police were like, okay, let's figure out, you know, what their relationship was like for the last couple of days. Let's go through their text messages. So police go and look through every single text message between Larry and Maya. Turns out there were none. None. There was not even a single text message between him and his wife. Larry deleted every single text message. Now, let me tell you something. <laughs> Jay and I, we probably send each other like a hundred texts a day. No lie. At least a hundred. And we both work from home, you know? So it's like, I feel like that's just the way we communicate. Like we're not going to always go and bother each other. So we just like text each other and, you know, we like just constantly communicating all day, you know? Larry had zero, zero text messages between him and his wife. Like not even a text message from the previous day. So when did you delete these? Like the day she went missing? What was his excuse? Oh, he was just trying to make more space on his phone. Like he didn't have enough storage. So he was deleting the text messages to make some space on his phone. I'm pretty sure text messages don't even take up that much like room, right? It's photos and stuff, right? So also CCTV footage show Maya returning home, you know, at 5 p.m. on the 7th. But there was never any footage of her leaving. On June 15th, Larry actually slammed the Chula Vista Police Department for holding him in custody while they searched his home. He also claimed that all the guns that they had previously seized from him were all obtained legally. He owned 22 firearms, including uh, three shotguns, five handguns, and I think it was seven AR-15s. Out of those, only eight of the firearms were legally registered to Larry. So he's a liar. And then on May 5th, 2021, he was actually given a temporary gun violence restraining order, which essentially required him to surrender all handguns, rifles, and ammunition over to the police. Basically anything to do with guns that was in his possession, he had to surrender. And this is basically a court order that prevents a person from owning or having in their possession anything to do with guns, you know, like they just need to hand it all over for a period of time. And they do this to stop the person with the gun ownership um, from causing injury either to himself or to others or having, you know, any gun in their control, buying a gun, receiving a gun from a family member, like they are not allowed to have anything on them. Even if it's not their own, they're just not allowed to have anything on them. And what the police do, they essentially come and they grab all the guns and things like that. And they like keep it with like a licensed gun dealer while the order is in effect. So then the police on July 20, uh, on July 1st, 2021, go and search the military residence for the third time. 
And after this, Larry was officially declared a person of interest in the case on July 22nd after the judge like released the information about this gun violence restraining order against him. And this was just due to the sheer amount of freaking guns that he had, like the rifles, the ammunition, the weapons that he had. It was just like an insane amount. And I wonder if Maya knew about the amount that he actually had. I mean, if she had no idea, that's kind of scary. But either way, living with someone who even owns one gun is scary, you know? Then on September 8th, 2021, Larry files this paperwork saying that he believed that his wife was still alive and that she had left the house on her own. So in his statement, he wrote, I considered her still alive because she had voluntarily left our house at least twice in 2020 without saying goodbye to me or our children. We have been praying for her safety and her well-being. That um, same month, that gun violence restraining order was extended for a further period of three months. On October 19th, 2021, the Chula Vista SWAT team actually arrested Larry based on circumstantial evidence. Police said 67 search warrants had been um, served, 87 interviews conducted, and 130 tips reviewed. Police at this stage had really poured thousands of hours into this investigation. Now, as we know, it's very unusual for prosecutors to move ahead with a case when there is no body. Maya had still not been found. And the prosecutors actually made a statement based on this fact and their statement read as follows. As we make this announcement, we understand that there are some questions about the fact that Maya's body is still missing, but the DA can file murder charges without having a body. There is case law that we will be using that makes it even more clear that a missing body is circumstantial evidence that there was foul play and that it was murder because someone who takes their own life cannot hide their own body. They also state that due to the sensitivity of the case and to not compromise the integrity of the case, they, would, uh, they wouldn't be sharing any further information regarding why they had arrested Larry, but they said that they did have evidence that could possibly compromise the prosecution's case if they did share it and that would also taint potential jurors. So they clearly had some evidence against Larry that they just were not willing to share because Maya's body has still not been located. Larry faced two charges, one for murder and one for the possession of an illegally obtained assault rifle. Larry obviously pleaded not guilty and he actually made a pretty like big statement and I'll read you some of it. He says, my wife May voluntarily left me and our three children. We do not know her whereabouts. Her disappearance is considered suspicious or criminal. The Chula Vista Police Department stated that I am not a suspect and there is no evidence of foul play. May has been acting erratically and locking herself inside the bedroom and would not allow our children to see her at times and she would often not join the children for breakfast, lunch or dinner. Her family continue to accuse me and implying that I killed my wife, Maya. They want to destroy me and they slander and defame me. And now they claim that they want to see my children. On October 27th, 2021, Larry allegedly violated a court order that prohibited from prohibited him from contacting his children. He was only allowed to contact his lawyer from jail. And at his arraignment, a criminal protective order was actually placed on the three children, like preventing Larry from contacting them. But the DA told the court that at the time, since his arrest, he had made 129 phone calls to his parents' home where his children were living. And some of these phone calls were with just his children and some of them were with his parents. And I mean, guys, these calls are recorded. So nine hours worth of phone calls were recorded where he was contacting his kids. And in the calls, uh, Larry is speaking with his 11-year-old daughter. And in those calls, he's telling his 11-year-old daughter to like read the news headlines to him. And he also told the kids to watch this like R-rated film called Shock Collar so that they could understand the environment that their dad was in. And the film is basically about this like well-to-do family man who is wrongly accused of a crime, he goes to jail, and then he becomes like a hardened criminal in jail. The DA tells the judge like the children are traumatized and the order was placed on Larry and the kids so that Larry couldn't, you know, further harm the children by feeding them this information and getting them involved. On November 10th, 2021, Mary Chris, Maya's sister, sought temporary custody of the three children. And she also planned to request permanent custody at some point some point in the future but weirdly instead the judge ruled that the children 
would remain under the care of the paternal grandparents, so Larry's parents. But the judge did grant visitation rights to Maya's family members, which is crazy to me because why did the paternal grandparents get the custody of the children when it was their son that was accused? Wouldn't there be some sort of implication that you know, they would be involved and they would it like they would be the partial party to the crime. They could also be feeding information to, you know, the kids. Not that not that there was any evidence that they did, but I'm just thinking out loud. Maya's family already lost Maya. I feel like they should have at least been given even 50-50 custody of the kids, which I know is not necessarily in the best interest of the children, but I don't know, given some more rights in terms of the children, like it's their grandchildren too. So Larry's trial will begin in June of this year, 2022. So we'll see what happens. Was there another suspect? I mean, we all, I feel like we all think that Larry did it. And especially with the altar and the spells and things like that. Oh, it's just a weird case. And it's, it's crazy to me because Jay and I have been together for like, like we met in high school, right? So how many years is that? Like ages, probably, probably we've been together like 18 years this year. 18, 19, 18 years, I think. And just to think of that, like, I know Larry and Maya were like older than us, but it still blows my mind that you're together for that long. And then this person that you're with could be accused of killing you. You know what I mean? Like, oh my God, like it's, it's just blows my mind. Like you guys have been together for so long. You two are the people that probably know each other the best. And then to have that person betray you if Larry did do it, you know, allegedly. So I don't know. I just find it like, it's such a sad turn of events. Larry just couldn't accept the fact that Maya was going to be leaving him. I mean, not every relationship lasts forever, especially nowadays. It's so difficult, you know, social media, just like meeting other people, access to things. I feel like life is so different now that we also feel like we have so many options. So relationships also just don't, they can't really withstand the time as they used to, I feel like. And there's also no like pressure to stay with that one person like it was back in the day. So I feel like Larry just couldn't kind of accept that and he probably didn't know what to do. Maybe he just was really in love with Maya. Now at this stage, Maya's remains have still not been found, you know, if she is dead, which we all think that she is. But there have been a ton of false alarms regarding Maya's like body being found. On February 3rd, 7th, and the 10th of 2021, there were like three bodies found and all of them were like they thought it was Maya and then they would conduct the dental record, you know, identification, things like that. Turns out it wasn't Maya, but dang, three bodies were found in that short period of time. So what's going on in San Diego? But yeah, it'd be really interesting if her body was found and we could find out how she died if she did die. And I feel like if it's your family, you know, they're probably, you probably kind of have this tiny, tiny hope of like, no, 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 maybe she's still alive. Maybe she's somewhere. Like when you don't have a body, I feel like it's no closure. So if she is gone, I really hope that they do find her body so that I could kind of help her family and even her children. Imagine her children. They're not young enough not to remember their mom. They're going to know they're going to have these memories of her and they're going to, they, they probably miss her. And I, I just, ugh, children, you know me, me and kids. This case seems so similar to a lot of recent cases of this nature. And it just, it's so sad when a spouse thinks that they can just end their other spouse's life because their views and their lifestyle or future plans are not aligning with their own the life they envisioned with that person is not turning out to be what they want. There's honestly not much more to say. And I feel like it's pretty obvious by Larry's actions, the evidence that we do know, it's most likely that he may have done it. Those three, those three kids are again, left without a mother and now possibly a father. So let me know your thoughts on today's case, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I will see you in the next one. I love you guys. Besitos. Bye.